just going to show Marco's riff so he can have it in his riff library. Yeah, so it's, wait. That kind of bad. There's also, uh, yeah. there's also that little practice amp there to the wireless thing. Yeah, so this is the second meeting now, the second writing session, and I was really excited to get this started because we kind of learned with Periphery 4 that if we take a little bit of time, we can let these ideas sort of absorb and we can get a pretty good sense of how we feel about them. And I think that's something that helped us all feel really good about Periphery 4, not only when we were writing it, but after the fact, because we were able to sit with the ideas and anything that needed to be improved, we could just go back and improve it. Whatever, there's gonna be synth in the background, so it won't even matter. I'll just ditch it. Yeah, ditch it. I'll be playing the rhythm anyways, because you're gonna be playing that part. I, don't play the, I already called the rhythm. Nope. I did it. I wrote the rhythm, I called it. <laughs> you're playing that part. I'm... Fucking leg up on the riser and everything. <laughs> The purpose of these sessions uh, is very similar to what we've done with the previous past couple records. Typically, me, Jake, and Misha get together and we'll begin writing the songs, basically from, from, from nothing. The main difference this time is that Spencer's been a part of it. He actually came out here and uh, just from day one, when we didn't really have any songs, even partially written, he was here to sort of be part of the arrangement process. And uh, honestly, that's made a, a huge difference. So we're uh, writing instrumental pieces for the record right now. Um, we've had two other writing sessions and written a bunch of music so far, but we don't know like what this record is still. You know, we're still trying to, trying to nail down exactly what we're looking for for the record. Um, so, you know, we're going to spend 10 days together, write a bunch of music, and then after that, the guys are going to drive back to Vegas with me and uh, we're write some vocals together. These sessions are, I feel like, the meat and potatoes of the, of the album process because that's where everything gets written. And we're trying to do this thing now where we're writing on the spot, but as we're writing and as we're demoing, we're trying to get takes, and the operative word is trying, but we're, we're trying to get takes that are solid enough to be final album takes, which ultimately makes our life easier when it comes to actually tracking the record.
I told you it was a good bill. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Hmm, this is interesting. And this is the silver. Is that an American material? <laughs> America. <laughs> You're in America now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I haven't dialed I haven't dialed this in yet, so let's try four. That usually works for lighter roasts. Okay. For the grind. Might take a couple bit. Get it right. I normally do eighteen point five to nineteen. Yeah. I kinda use it as a way to adjust. It looks really good actually. <laughs> um so once it hits like thirty two, thirty three, I'll stop it. And you're at 23, 24 seconds. I think the part that just feels a little slow now is like the section after that where like kind of before that blast beat section comes in and yeah. where just all those accent hits are happening, that would be really epic as a build with vocals. When it kicks back in with the groove like right after the blast beat part, having a vocal section there could be really cool. Um, and I think it would obviously carry it. I mean, it's an epic section. Um, it's just really open right now. sessions are really casual so we just kind of get together with no expectation we like coming into this more as like a hangout session that we can kind of enjoy each other's company rather than focusing on like having to have some sort of product or something to show for for it like we don't go into it saying okay we're gonna finish an album in this amount of time that's not what's important to us so what's important to us is we meet up, we get together in a room, and we start vibing off of each other's writing or humor. And from that sort of synergy, we find time to create music. And that's kind of what the first couple of writing sessions for any periphery session start out like. And then once we have the ball rolling with some ideas, then it kind of, takes on a life of its own and, and the music sort of steers where we go. That takes the pressure off. And really we found that when we're under pressure when we're working on an album, we're not as happy with the results. Uh, so, you know, we found that this is our, probably the best way to work together. Sounds good, dude. All right. All right, man. All right, enjoy, have fun, miss you guys. Love yeah. You. Miss you too, dude. Miss, miss you too, man. All right, see ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. Secret weapon. It's recording and then playing back on those heads, which is why it has that degraded repeat. Oh, I've got uh, three other tape delays actually. This one is from the 60s, uh, which was used on like satellites and a bunch of periphery stuff. Love this one to death. Uh, it just doesn't have a chorus effect on it. This one, which is like, or that one there, which is an old rolling unit from like the 80s, and then this one, which is like a modern version of that. So I like my tape delays. It's hard to like replicate the effect they have. Thank you. 
don't fuck the notes, just the rhythm. Okay. Like do 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 do. That's that's exactly what I was hearing. Instead of da 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 da. Yeah, like make it straighten it out. Do 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 do. Something kind of like that. Yeah. But I think it, it, it needs the feel needs to change of where. It's great. Yeah. Oh, I have a, oh, I have a shape. Oh, this this is very, oh. very easy to sing. Yeah, that's what you want. Singability. Does that work I better I fucking there? love that. I think it does work well there. Your heart. Yep. Yeah. Just give yourself a, a breath. Yeah. Your heart is open. Your heart, heart. Your heart is open. Open. What if it was less held out? Your heart is open. Yeah, do that. Your heart is open. Yeah, that's better. I think that sounds better. Your heart is open. I can't fucking find the beat to land on that. You're, you're. Your heart is open. Yeah. yeah. Your heart is open. It's good to be here finally with everybody. One, you know, we all haven't been together as, as the five of us in huh. two, two years. years. Yeah, more than two years. Our last show was February 16th, 2020. And that was the last time we were all together. Whew. So being together now, is great and we've all just kind of fallen right back in step with with each other and it's great to do it around the writing process <clears throat> you need you need open hats for a chorus no no, no I'm, I'm saying it shouldn't all be closed i'm saying the staccato hats should be like in the like almost like ghost notes leading into those open accents I think most of what the, you know, the last two years, the pandemic has given me is like this complete, like newfound appreciation for it on a different level where I like, I'm looking at the little things and be like, wow, it's just nice to be around you guys again. You know, I haven't seen you in two years, you know, like mm -hmm. we've FaceTimed and we've talked, but I literally haven't seen you in two years. And I've seen the other guys, but it's mainly, you know, it's been for a week and a half or two weeks and we work on music. And I like the fact that I'm able to just like say to myself, like, oh, this is not, like, this is not normal. Like, I want to be able to look at this and be like, this is fucking special. Like, what mm -hmm. we do is special. And I don't want to take it for granted. I think right now I'm really, really uh, savoring every little thing about doing this, you know, like every little thing. I'm, I'm just trying to just take it all in because felt like we haven't had it for years. 24 ounce green monster, berry blastful, berry blastful, tropical acai smoothie. Yeah, that's all that's on there. Fuck. What the fuck? Is this mine then? That's that's yours, yeah. Right. But that sucks because you want. You probably yeah, I'd like to eat, but that's all right. I'll eat later. Fuck. Huh? You want to split some with me? I oh no, I appreciate it, dude. We can both like serve out. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You, you, thank you so much. No, it's, it's totally fine. You guys enjoy your food. Yeah, I will. Uh... You want my laptop? <laughs> <laughs> you want my laptop? You can't eat that. <laughs> what if you didn't have the second note at all? That you put on that music. Just the second note. Hmm. Let's get this next one. That. 
Let's get that. You don't like that one? I just want to hear what it sounds like without it. Get there, right? Like just to give the, the vocal breath yeah. real quick. Just I just want to hear it. That's all. Mm-hmm. Just a bunch of experience man. That's sick. Hold on. That one. Just take out that second note. Yeah, just take out that second note. I, I, I'm not saying to not process it, I'm just saying just less. More top end. Yeah. A tiny bit, just a tight, like like 10, 15 percent. I think the flutters just make it sound real. I mean, it they're sounds like, like, like it's like they're like auto tune flutter sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your heart is open. Oh, that, is, yeah. that is an auto tune flutter, yeah. yeah. What if it's not tuned? It's here. I can I can recut it better. That's you like cut it better. Yeah, it's but I don't mind time. it sounding a little bit like vulnerable. No, like I'm fine with that. I just it's got to sound it's got to sound right. Can so. we just listen from the end there and then we'll go? Okay. Just want to hear the end section into that. Sure. This would be fucking sick. exits away. I'm just going to check we're going to the same one. That one there. This one? Yeah. I'm going to go this one? Yeah, that's closer. Alright. Blue diamond road? Yeah. We have war gobble, fat drag, and cockpit. And then if, as a bonus, like, it'd be cool to get around to doing uh, Hey for Brother and see if we push, to push that out. Um, but if we can get all that, that's 10 songs. 10? Wow. And even without, we were saying, Uncle Brother, it's I like an hour. That's, now. that's like an hour. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. And, and if we cut one or two of those because they're just the, the not just enough, then that's eight songs. Mm-hmm. It's impossible for us to put out a record that's not an hour. Yeah. Indeed. <clears throat> First half, like power in that range is sounding really, it's really good. It's all about over exaggerating the pronunciation. Like that's the only way you can get power in that but range. You're, you're you're selling it. It's like uh, it's cutting through, even though it's not in your like fire range. That's yeah. Sick. Thanks, man. It's really sick. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm really digging this now. Uh, do we have? Um, we should probably like write harmonies and shit for it. We could do that. Do you want to listen to the whole <coughs> thing, or do you yeah. want to write harmonies? Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Four fries. Got some chicken nuggies. Come on. Come on. What the fuck is that? Melee. That's not what you do with this. 
<laughs> yeah, that's it. I like it. Cool. Can we hear the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not gonna hear that. Sorry. It's when all the bad times stick. <laughs> <laughs> when all the bad times stick. <laughs> My favorite kind of steak. Oh. You could just copy that. Oh. Oh, I said. <laughs> yes. God damn. Are you serious? The neighbors just called 911. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That's that's so funny because they hear music coming from here all the time. I think you'd think they'd put like two and two together that we're like recording over here. Invite him in and listen to the trash. Let's get the cops and shame Did did you tell her we're like like recording like for okay, cool. Okay. All right, thanks, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>
in general the kit's actually a little bit more stripped down perhaps than the last record we did which again I think is cool because that's something that highlights Matt's kind of spontaneity as a player he's really good at being creative with with what he's got I really do hope that people like this record because we certainly have poured a lot of um, a lot of energy into it. You know, not just me and Nolly, but the whole band. Um, this has been quite a process. You know, it's taken a long time to solidify the songs for everybody to to kind of show up um, as their true self. I think was something for this record that kind of happened organically, where we all kind of were working through our own personal things, and we were all working through things as a band. And the result of it is the most honest representation of where each of us are individually and collectively at this moment in time. Some of the gear that we're using to track guitars, we're in the guitar tracking session. We're kind of in the middle of it. A lot of things haven't been determined just yet, but we have been tracking the, the DIs. The idea is that we are going to capture the DIs. We're using uh, neural plugins right now. I'm a big fan of the Omega, which interestingly enough, I have the real amp of right here. As you can see right there, the Omega Dren Grenifier. It's a great amp. Um, above my invective, which is just a workhorse, the thing gets used and abused. Those are the two mainstays if we are going to be reamping, which we are going to mess around with. Yeah, it's that note, and then eight, you were hitting the right one, and then seven after that uh, on the same string. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's a yeah. weird riff. It is a weird riff. Yeah. Spencer. As you'll see if you come over here, we have a whole bunch of pedals. I don't know what will end up on the album. If we do reamp, this always goes on the heavy stuff, the Horizon Devices Precision Drive. This microcosm is a really wild pedal. Don't know if it'll get used. This is a very special pedal here, the generation loss. It makes it sound like an old uh, VHS or old tape, you know, um, that, that sort of effect. Um, Got to have a decent gate. This is pretty cool. This is a God City something. I don't know, BJR. Not entirely sure what it does, but it's sort of like fuzz distortion kind of thing. We got an Octover here. We got a Digitech Whammy we're using a little bit. And uh, that's an expression pedal I'm using with the Axe Effects. It helps with some of the laser sounds. <laughs> I've been writing so much of this material on this guitar and uh, just sort of demoing at home, so I wanted to keep things uh, really consistent. The only difference here with my other six string signature models is that this has different pickups. These are kind of new things I've been working on with Seymour Duncan. Um, you know, it's prototyping, seeing if we can improve off of the uh, Alpha Omega set. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here we have uh, our one electronic song on the album. It is called Cocknet. I'm just kidding. It's called something else. But that was the demo title. And uh, a cocknet is the net that is in um, swimming trunks. So the song starts like this. about this sound is this is one of my favorite software synths. It's called the Diva. It's made by a company called UHE and I use this on everything. Like this is on pretty much every track on my solo stuff. We use this all over Periphery 5. Pretty sure we used it on Periphery 4 and maybe Periphery 3. Um, but it's uh, just a very uh, uh, authentic sounding analog style synth. So it's like if you uh, if you can't afford the hardware or you can't find the hardware or whatever this is probably your best bet so uh, one of the one of the key components of that kind of uh, old school sound is the OCS 45 and this thing is cool because you can add a uh, kind of like a retro cassette sound like a warbling that old ta only happens on like old tape and you can even customize it you can like customize the noise because a lot of you'll hear like a very like low static if you listen to cassette tapes and you can customize what that sounds like uh damaged or uh old, much older cassette tapes will have dropouts and stuff and then to accompany that we have some delay we use h delay waves h delay and uh, make it a little bit louder with the decapitator by sound toys and then uh, a little bit of compression on there too <laughs> And that's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool way to kind of establish that, hey, we're going to synthwave territory. Here is kind of like the brains of everything. Brains! Um, but we have an Axe FX that we um, we're using as uh, amp modeler, as a DI, as a tuner. Um, we control everything on Axet, which is, uh, is on the computer. Uh, we have one of Misha's invectives. We'll probably, we take DIs of everything, so we'll probably reamp certain things if we were trying to go for a different vibe, or just try things out and see what sounds the best. We'll do this thing where we'll do like um, a blind tone test. So it'll be like me and Misha kind of figuring out which tracks we want to, uh, we want to mess with or reamp. Then we'll do three passes through the Axfex or the Invective or whatever. And uh, then we'll call Mark and we'll be like, all right, which one do you think sounds the best?
pop boxes. And what's cool about doing things this way is that you can get really, really custom sounds that can create either inspirational moments or, or just kind of like that motivation to kind of create things that, you know, aren't a preset and you just kind of go based on feel. You kind of let the, the pedals direct you, which is, which is fun. So what determines if an idea will make the cut? It's real simple. We all just need to be like, fuck yeah. It's, it's deceptively simple. And it's also very complicated. It's a feeling. It's something that can't necessarily be quantified, but sometimes you just hear a section or you hear a riff or you hear something, you're like, okay, we got something here. If everyone else is nodding, if everyone else is feeling it, then you're like, okay, we're onto something. Sometimes you may think it's kind of cool, but you may be second guessing and you know, I'll ask the rest of the guys or they'll ask me or whatever. And if it's kind of mixed, then we're like, okay, like, does this have potential? Is there something that we can do? Maybe sometimes all it takes is a little tweak and then everyone feels good about it and then we've got something. But I think we're always chasing that feeling. We always want to feel good about it. We want, we want to be the ones who feel good about it because ultimately if other people don't like it, you know, that won't really matter. If we believe in it, then at least we'll know we're, we're getting what we were looking for out of this process. That's really why I chase. I enjoy the chase of this idea. I enjoy the process where you don't know what's gonna happen and you see the ideas be, become greater than the sum of their parts just by everybody's input. So this is the moment that I really treasure. better than the first one to where we should just do another one. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. We got it. How? One more, one more, one more, sorry. Where do we belong? That was a little bit off. Where do we belong? Do we belong? 
Uh, hi, uh, Mr. Belong. Do we do? <laughs> you can get the schlong. <laughs> do we belong? <laughs> do we belong? <laughs> vote for belong. <laughs> do we belong? Do we belong? Do we belong? Do we That's the brother you want to vote for. <laughs> get the schlong. From do we belong? <laughs> Brought to you by do we belong? Paperback. <laughs> <laughs>